So we were talking about the methodology that was used for the aquatic therapy studies and the methodology we said was qualitative studies and that this was used to get a better understanding of the beliefs, values, and motivations that underlie the individual's health behaviors. Then we talked about the data collection. The aim of the case study was to obtain an in-depth and multi-perspective holistic understanding of the phenomenon and interest which implied the need for multiple data sources and multiple data collection instruments. The data was collected through non-participant observation, informal interviews, semi-structured interviews, focus groups, and researcher field notes. This data gathered information with the meaning of aquatics therapy and prior experiences, the influence of aquatic therapy within the school, several causal factors in which aquatic therapy experiences were most useful, and a series of questions was established for each unit of analysis. The data collection consisted of two phases. First, a non-participant phase, observation and informal interviews were conducted. In the second phase, in-depth interviews and focus groups were conducted. The researchers explained that the purpose and design of the study was given to the school principal and students during an initial face-to-face contact section, which means the researcher had to go up to the school and actually talk to the principal in order to get permission for the participants to participate. Separate information sessions were held for their students, their parents, and the health educational professionals who participated in the study. Finally, participants were invited to participate and the sessions were, for, were held at the school. Results. Out of the results, 27 participants, 11 observed students, three students interviewed, eight parents participated in focus groups, and three healthcare professionals and two teachers all were interviewed. Table one displays the socio-demographic data of the participants. The average age of the children was 11 years old. The duration of school attendance was almost six years, and the mean number of years of them receiving aquatic therapy was four and a half years. The most predominant level of gross motor function classification systems was 42.8% or 43%. None of the sessions were interrupted, and none of the children reported adverse effects during the sessions, during the swim sessions. Results, 27 participants, 11 observed, three students interviewed, eight parents participated, and three health professionals. Table one, we talked about the, the children's um, demographics and about the most predominant level of the gross motor functional classification skill was 42.8. So the final results of the study yielded four themes emerged from the material analyzed. And the first one was the connected connection with the environment. So it was a positive co connection with the several policy students who participated within the swimming environment in the aquatics therapy while they were taking that. That increased by 30%. The posterior improvements in mobility are their ability with their gross motor skills to perform uh, increase because of the water therapy, the aquatic therapy, that increased by 15%. The opportunity to perform tasks, which meant the ability that some of the students had to follow directions and do what they were asked to do during the training. Because when you're receiving aquatics training, you have to follow the directions of the instructor uh, in order to participate. That increased by 20%. And the learning and transfer increased by 30% which means as they were learning how to swim or how to participate, those learning skills transferred to some of their academic and social skills inside their classroom. Conclusion. Our findings may help us to better understand the benefits of different types of intervention approaches for children with severe cerebral palsies in special education settings. Therefore, this study highlighted the use of of AT or aquatic therapy as an alternative treatment approach which was applied in these schools. The children and parents of the study overall felt that the AT sessions were helpful, making children feel happy, relaxed, and calm. 
as well as enabling them to participate in further activities for the remainder of the day. And that concludes our presentation about the influence of aqua therapy on students that have cerebral palsy. This is a, a, a highly sophisticated field because you have students who normally don't participate with their peers. And when they're using the water therapy, it's a win-win situation for all parties, including the students, the parents, and the healthcare providers, because the aquatic therapy helps with the physical condition of the child with cerebral palsy, as well as the mental and the social emo emotional. However, I feel that more research needs to be done. Thank you.